Thanks to Eve for sponsoring this video. My name is Eric Wielander. Welcome to my channel. Wi-Fi is such an important part of your smart home, not only for getting things like cameras online, but also for getting your other tech like your laptop, your tablet, any other stuff on the internet. And in my experience in technology, there are certain problems where if you spend just a little bit more money than you were probably hoping to spend, it can kind of make the problem go away. Maybe you got a really nice Apple computer and that is is just so much better and so then you spent maybe more money than you wanted to on a computer but it's just way more reliable and way better than the alternatives so that's the same thing with Eero and Wi-Fi in my opinion I've been using Eero Wi-Fi in my home since 2015 and over the years they've been very reliable and I recently upgraded to their new Eero Pro 6 base station so I'm going to talk about the experience of that but also a lot of what I'm talking about with Eero on this uh, applies to their Eero 6 line as well. So if you're looking at that or the Eero Pro 6, the big difference between the two of those is that the Eero 6 is a dual band Wi-Fi system, whereas the Eero Pro 6 is a tri-band Wi-Fi system. So you get more Wi-Fi radios to handle the capacity of more devices. So if you're looking at a bigger home or a lot of devices, say let's say 50 plus devices on your home Wi-Fi, then you might want to consider the Pro 6 like I got. And of course, you can try certain combinations and mix and match there and always add additional base stations from Eero or their little beacons whenever you need extra signal in a particular area of your home. Now you might be thinking why this whole multiple base station system? I thought you just need one wireless router in your home and that's how things started out way back in the day but Eero pioneered this technology that's also used by some other companies as well that's called mesh Wi-Fi and that means that each of these base stations uses a special uh, discrete uh, bespoke wireless frequency to communicate between the two different base stations or three or four or five or however many you have and so that allows you to get Wi-Fi signal across your home through a collection of different access points and they can also carry those signals over Ethernet as well if you happen to have your base stations hardwired together so in the past in my home I've actually used four different Eero base stations to cover my home, but I'm trying to go with just three. So I got the Eero Pro 6 three pack, and that comes with, of course, three Eero Pro 6 base stations in the box, along with their corresponding power supplies, some literature, and then you also get an ethernet cable that you can use to connect to, let's say a modem or however you're getting your internet. Now, I tested and set up this system in two different ways, and I'm going to tell you about that in the differences with that but first thanks to Eve for sponsoring this week's video. Eve makes quality products for Apple HomeKit with privacy in mind. You don't have to set up an additional user account and they promise not to track you. I've been using Eve products in my smart home for years and one of my favorites is the Eve Energy Smart Plug. Now this is a great example of how Eve is embracing thread across their product line and the Eve Energy can serve as a thread router that can forward traffic on from various sensors maybe you have an Eve weather or an Eve door and window across your network and that takes load off of your Wi-Fi network. Now it's also super fast. I find that when I open a door or window with an Eve door and window sensor it communicates really quickly to an Eve Energy Smart Plug. And on top of that you should check out Eve's app. They have a great free app in the App Store which allows you to not only manage and update your Eve products but it's also a great way to control and do some advanced automations for your HomeKit smart home. Now if you want to get an Eve Energy for yourself or just learn more about what Eve's doing, check out the links in the video description. Now, your internet service provider or ISP might have given you a router with your setup of internet connection and depending on the situation, you might be required to use that as your router. For example, I tried 5G home internet and that requires you to have their router that connects the 5G network and your home network. And so in that kind of a case, you can set up your wireless access points like Eero base stations in what's called bridge mode. And that means that they're not actually managing the traffic on your network, they're just supplying the Wi-Fi connection. And oftentimes it's good to go ahead and figure out how to turn off the Wi-Fi inside of that cable company or internet service provider box, but then just use your Eero base stations for the Wi-Fi. 
and that will be a massive signal improvement and qu uh, quality of connection improvement across your home but you won't get all the benefits of Eero. But I did set it up that way. It works great with Eero Pro 6 and I uh, had no issues. Now, alternatively, if you're getting your uh, internet through something like a cable modem or some other modem that just takes you straight to the internet, then you can use one of the Eero base stations as what's called a gateway router. And that means that it is the main connection to the internet and manages things like assigning IP addresses and all of the details and allows Allows you to use certain things in the Eero app like uh, setting up things like port forwarding and DHCP reservations and all kinds of fancy stuff with the Eero secure plan so uh, that's that's more I think what most people would want to go with if they're going with Eero but I did want to clarify that if you do have to use somebody else's router you can still use Eero to get a lot better Wi-Fi in your home now if you are setting up a gateway Eero that's the one you want to set up first and once you do that the app will also walk you through setting up your additional Eeros around your home and it's very flexible about dealing with whatever collection of Eeros you're setting up and you can also always go back to the app and add in more base stations over time if you get them later and once they set up you might need to have it run a software update and reboot everything but then once that's good you get to take advantage of a lot of cool features the first of course as i was talking about the Eero app it's not only well designed for setup but i also just love it as a great overview of my wireless network i can see the connected devices as well as the status of each of my Eero base stations and the internet connection overall so oftentimes if i'm having flaky internet issues let's say i i can open the Eero app and see what's going on and it, you know sometimes it's the isp the internet service provider is down and that that way I can see it right in there that that's the problem and it's not something with one of my Eros and I know where to at least start my troubleshooting. And you can also get very nerdy into the details of the network settings in there, assigning things like what I like to do, which DHCP reservations. If you have certain devices, particularly smart home devices on your Wi-Fi that are causing you a lot of issues, they're not always working reliably, I find that giving them a uh, specific IP address that stays consistent over over time can help with some of those issues. That's something you can do inside the Eero app once you, you know, as long as you're not running in bridge mode. And that tends to help in my experience with certain problematic devices. Now, speaking of that device control, you can group devices into what are called profiles, which then allow you to control when those devices can access the internet or when they can't access the internet. As well as if you sign up for Eero Secure, you can also filter content for those particular devices and view the data usage over time. And these profiles could correspond to a family member or any number of other things you want to categorize in your smart home. Now, with Eero Secure, it is a monthly subscription uh, that Eero has available, and it's like $2.99 a month, I think, for their entry-level plan, and that gives you some enhanced security in your home where it will do some more monitoring and give you some better usage statistics of your network over time. Now, if you then get the Eero Secure Plus, it also includes my favorite password manager, 1Password, uh, a VPN service with Encrypt.me, as well as Malwarebytes, and both plans include DDNS as well. I've seen some other companies out there that have products that come onto your smart home network and provide this for you. I like that with Eero, you get these options built in, even if you don't always have them or subscribe to them. It's just, I find it nice to have that one touch option that you can turn on and use if you need to or when you need to down the road. Another cool thing that the app has is you can get notifications when new devices join your Wi-Fi. So certain of our family members have access to our Wi-Fi network and one of the first ways I find out that they've arrived at our home is I see a notification on my phone that their iPhone or whatever device has connected to our Wi-Fi. And the cool thing is you can get this regardless of whether you're in bridge mode or using the gateway router, you know, full Eero setup. And like a lot of modern Wi-Fi systems, you can also create a guest network if you want to have that for people visiting your home. The Eero also has a thread radio and can serve as a thread border router on your thread network. Now, currently, if you really want to geek out about the details of thread, it doesn't work on your HomeKit thread network with your HomeKit compatible products like your Nanoleaf Essentials bulbs or your uh, sponsor of this video, Eve Energy Smart Plugs. 
but at the same time with matter coming in the future that will all go away and these Eero routers will be able to participate in the thread network for Apple HomeKit. In the meantime you can also though connect as previously talked about Nanoleaf lines uh, on this channel and you can go ahead and connect your Eero account in there so that Nanoleaf and Eero can communicate together as a thread network. And also along with thread both the Eero 6 and Eero Pro 6 have Zigbee radios and this means that they can serve as a Zigbee hub for those devices but that really more applies if you're using Amazon and the Alexa system to manage your smart home. So I tend to talk more about using Apple HomeKit so it doesn't really apply as much here. Now what are some of the differences you might see if you're upgrading from a previous generation of Eros? So the first thing I noticed right out of the box was that these base stations are much larger than previous generations. Uh, you can see here I have the, the first generation, second generation Eero and now the Eero Pro 6 base station and it's a much larger base station. It's probably not going to change your interior design wherever you had these Eeros placed in your home before it's probably going to fit in just fine but it is noticeably larger when you put them side by side and things like wall mounts that you might have already had with the previous generations of Eeros are not going to fit the new version now one of the things you can do for upgrading is trade in your old Eeros for a discount or credit I am in the process of doing this with my older Eero uh, devices and so Amazon sent me a shipping label and sometime soon I'm going to package up those devices and and ship them to Amazon and get a credit there. Now, the biggest difference between the Eero Pro 6 and previous generation Eeros is Wi-Fi 6, and that represents a massive speed improvement for the Wi-Fi in your home. Now, this can help out in two main scenarios. One is if you have a really fast internet connection, like a gigabit connection, then you'll be able to get more of that speed while you're on Wi-Fi throughout your home. The other benefit is if you have, let's say, network attached storage or any other case where you're doing some file transfers within your home, that can be a decent bit faster. I did some tests transferring some files from my computer to my Synology network attached storage on my network with Wi-Fi on both my second generation Eero Pro system and the Eero Pro 6. And I'm gonna put some of these numbers up on the screen. I transferred uh, just an exported video of my HomePod Mini one year later video. And then I also did a video file that came straight from my camera, my Canon R6, to transfer that. And then also a zip file of Xcode. So if you're a developer, you might have previous versions of Xcode that you might keep zips around of. And uh, it just kind of represents an array of different file types here. And the Xcode zip I found had the biggest speed improvement and the R6 video file had the least, but either, any of these are not gonna be earth shattering performance improvements but they're definitely going to be a speed difference that you'll notice and will save you a little bit of time if you are transferring those kinds of files. Another great feature Eero has is HomeKit router support. Eero was actually the first company to support Apple's HomeKit router and this allows you to have detailed control of different devices on your HomeKit network and what has what levels of network access. Now personally I found this to cause more problems than it solves so unless you're really security conscious I don't recommend turning it on I think that it's not enough HomeKit supported accessories out there do adequate testing with this kind of a scenario where they might not have access to the internet or the local network and just the internet or things like that so I would recommend keeping it turned off, but I have tried it and made a video on it in the past, and it is something you can totally use with Eero. Now, no product is so perfect that it can't be complained about or critiqued, and so what are the downsides that I see with my Eero system? Well, the first one off the bat is that there are only two ethernet ports per base station. I find this to be a huge downside in terms of you, you probably have to buy an additional ethernet or unmanaged switch to add more, let's say, smart home hubs like a Lutron hub or an Akara hub to your network. So I'd love to see in future versions of these, especially in the Pro line, if Eero 
could supply more ethernet ports on the back. The second one, I don't necessarily see as a downside myself, but some people out there might. Eero was a startup that was independent for a while, and then they got acquired by Amazon. Now, Amazon has kept them as more or less a separate company as an Amazon company. Eero has its own CEO, which is one of the founders, but at the same time, you know, they do have integrations with your Amazon account and tight integrations with things like the Amazon Alexa ecosystem and stuff there where maybe if you're not as into that and you use more Apple's smart home stuff like I do, you're just not going to get some of those benefits as much. And every so often, maybe there's, uh, you know, features in the future that Amazon pushes down to these that maybe you don't like as much, you're going to turn off and things. But so far, I haven't seen any issues like this and I'm completely happy just using my Eros as is. Now, the last downside is in the past, I've seen Eero push their Eero secure plan a lot in the app. I haven't seen it as much recently, but it is something that's kind of a, a downside of just that, you know, if you don't want to be pushed to get another subscription service in this day and age of subscriptions for everything, which is a great business model in certain ways, and I do completely understand it. I mean, it just does get kind of annoying after a while to be bombarded with all kinds of different subscriptions to sign up for. I would love to see why can't, if, if Eero is an Amazon company, why can't I get Eero uh, secure as part of Amazon Prime? But in general, I know so many people who swear by Eero as their connection to the internet. And I even have a neighbor down the street who is having a lot of issues with a different mesh Wi-Fi system. And I told him to try out Eero, he did. And I haven't heard about any problems since. So Eero is definitely remaining my pick for home Wi-Fi. But again, if it's not as much of a fit for you, I do plan to look at and evaluate other Wi-Fi 6 mesh network options in the future on this channel. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. As well as check out my Apple Home Weekly newsletter. This is a newsletter I recently started that's completely for free, comes out every Saturday, and has some more analysis on Apple smart home and related tech. And if you're curious about the HomeKit router stuff that I talked about earlier, which Eero supports, I did a video going in depth on that, a little bit older video on my channel, and that's linked somewhere here on the screen. And thanks again to Eve for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you in the next one.